Is this thing on? Oh my god. I'm going vertical today. I'm excited about this. I'm just going to take up more of your screen so you can see what's up. Hey, I'm Alexandra. I make YouTube videos and I feel like I feel like summer is like one of those times where ads make it out to be like effortless and easy and chic. But in reality, for me, this is like the hardest time of year beauty wise. I mean, all my issues, hair issues, more hair issues, lots of hair issues. I'm giving you five beauty tips to make these issues a little bit easier. And the truth is anybody who's ever looked put together or beautiful or effortless, they're putting in a lot of effort. And summer is, is one of those times where it's actually not effortless to look your best. And I'm going to share some things that will put you on the fast track to feeling really confident. Okay, let's start the video. Also, give it a thumbs up if you enjoy, but if you don't, give it a thumbs down. That lets me know how you feel and let's get started. Let's talk about makeup because makeup has a completely different feel. It has a completely different effect in the summertime than it does in any other season. Makeup is a colored cosmetic. We're using color to redefine and enhance our features in a way that feels good. But in the summertime, texture is the first thing the eye notices about makeup. And well, when I think of the sun, I think of it as like happy and light and cheerful, but it's actually very abrasive and it casts high contrast over the skin and washes out color, but emphasizes texture. So that's why I recommend before you choose your makeup look, think about what kind of lighting you're going to be in. And this is something I consider because I personally like to cater my look, not to photographs where I would wear more makeup for, but for in-person things, because that's where I want to look my best. Leave behind structural makeup changes, like doing a cut crease and go for bold colors if you're going to have some fun but keep it simple on the skin and reduce the amount of foundation and coverage you're wearing. With that, simpler looks look so much better in the summertime, and that's because the first thing that stands out is color and silhouette in the sunlight. So redirecting your attention from bold, bright makeup looks and finding ways to add that to engaging fabrics, silhouettes, and dresses that don't necessarily have to be tight, hairstyles that are half up, this can really emphasize your whole look. And that's because in a really high contrast lighting situation, your silhouette of your clothing is what's really going to stand out the most. With all that said, in the summertime, it's time to enhance your biological beauty. The elements we all share before we add color cosmetics on top, like hair, skin, brows, and lips, finding ways to enhance these naturally occurring things about us is going to make us feel more confident and beautiful in a much quicker way. Now, it's not easy to pull off a no makeup look with literally not a stitch of makeup, but I'm going to show you a no makeup look. We're not going to use any foundation, and this is going to be aiming to show that there is absolutely nothing but naturalness happening on the face. This look is going to play to the natural elements of beauty that make us seem healthy and sexy and naturally gorgeous, and we're going to be using Photoshop techniques uh, with makeup to really make this look real. You've heard sunscreen is good for sun protection to prevent against cancer cancer, etc., aging, but this, I want to tell you, actually will help you continually brighten your skin over time. If you're using a sunscreen every single day, and you absolutely must, if we're going to continue this relationship together, <laughs> just kidding, but seriously, please start using sunscreen. It will help your skin brighten over time, especially if you're using any form of skincare. This is going to protect you from dullness and sallowness, which will make you look more naturally pretty over time. Now, continuing with our theme of biological beauty, it's time for lip plumper. I love this. And by this, I just mean like any lip plumper. It doesn't have to be this one. In fact, I'll link my favorite one below, but using any lip plumper is always going to like bring blood to the surface. When there's no blood in the lips, they look like a purple ashy color. And when there is, they look beautiful. So I'm going to wipe it off after five minutes and then move on to the next step. Now, if you've never applied blush to bare skin, I encourage you to give it a try. Even if you need to use a little spot concealer, if you have some acne, try a peach blush because it brightens up dullness in the skin. And some of the same things we're getting from the coverage of the blush, we'd be looking for in foundation. You might find that you need less than you think. Now that we've got a few pretty and juicy looking focal points on the face, let's correct some of the pigment that doesn't seem so flattering. This under eye of mine has a lot of blue tones, so I'm using a peach color corrector, and this is going to brighten up the area, and I'm putting this above the lip for discoloration as well. I'm going to blend everything after I spot conceal and make sure that it blends seamlessly, especially staying pigmented in the areas I placed it down. The lips and the blush are both bringing a beautiful rosy flush, and the last step is to lift the lashes all the way up so that they look wide awake and bright. Applying mascara is really easy when they're lifted because it automatically makes you look beautiful. Skin, brows, and lips are taken care of, and now the face looks still pretty plain, but really beautiful and bright, and you can't tell that I'm wearing makeup. This last step is going to look like a little shimmer and makeup, and that's cool because it looks like that's all I'm wearing. Put a little highlighter on the cheeks if you want to glow in the sun. 
So as a result of like focusing on those aspects of doing my makeup, I realized I actually want to get my lashes lifted permanently. I love this treatment. I feel like this is one of those beauty treatments that has a really high like appreciation rate. Like I don't think anyone would not appreciate the way that this looks. It makes mascara look so beautiful. Like your lashes, you just wake up and they're like already standing up, which you wouldn't think makes like a huge difference. Like I feel like when people think of eyelashes, they want to extend them and make them so much larger. But sometimes it's those subtle differences that will make you still feel like you, but like way more beautiful. And that is such a powerful feeling. Okay, so the first visual where I'm like, yeah, the arrow's pointing, that's where I have my brows bleached, and on the other side, I don't have them bleached. Bleaching my brows is one of those subtle changes that brightens up the face, and if you have ever used a lightener in your hair, put some highlights in or balayage, I highly recommend using a brow lightener. There's a small amount of like black pigment that has a bit of a gray tone in it that lives in the eyebrow, and I want to remove that entirely, so leaving this on for only five minutes makes it really easy to just take that gray shade out, and I'm left behind with the darkest brunette brow. If you've ever lightened your hair, give this a try, and if you have a medium or olive skin tone like me, you might really like this for brightening your face. Thumbs up if you're enjoying the video so far, so I know if you like it. In life, I notice sometimes like we go in circles, we're like chasing something or we're, we're constantly having the same thing come up again and again and patterns are just like such a thing for me. I always want to master stuff when I see a pattern and I notice the same issues, the same things that made me feel insecure like 10 years ago are still there. Strawberry legs are one of the biggest things I've dealt with and ultimately body hair, like being way hairier than like everybody and like having thick dark hair that actually lives underneath the skin even if I shaved, even if I wax, I always had dots. So laser hair removal is the one solution that will actually remove the hair from the root. So those little dark dots no longer appear. Now, if you have little red dots in the skin, that's a sign of inflammation and that can be fixed with glycolic washes, AHA products, and things in the shower that will exfoliate the pore. Now it's difficult as it is to have strawberry legs, but it is really normal, especially because light hair naturally would let dark hair show through. So the only way to really get rid of strawberry legs if it's from hair is to get laser to permanently remove the root. This is not just a beauty treatment. This is me ending the chase. This is me ending that thing that's making me feel terrible every single time I have to wear shorts. This is that thing that's like, providing a solution for something that's going to boost my confidence in a really, really big way. This requires an investment of time and money. And I realized that I made excuses for not doing things that require both time and money, but I've been chasing other things to kind of like mask my lack of confidence over these issues. So like, I'd rather not chase clothing or things like that. I'd rather put some money aside and really solve my problem. So I truly feel great. Summer for me feels like the perfect time to learn and I've been, I actually considered going back to school recently because I, I've just been really passionate about improving like the content that I'm making and like getting really accurate on things like skin and anyways, I really like, I really like skin. That's what I'm getting at here. I thought maybe, maybe I would study it in school to be like professional, you know, because I like keeping my skin clear. But it's funny because it like, I thought I really had it down with the skin thing and I was filming this video and I was literally like, wait, let me see, do I have like back acne? And I do. And it's it was actually pretty bad when I first discovered it. I think I've been dealing with this for longer than I thought, but now it's summertime. So I like want to wear stuff that shows my back and I'm like, damn it, I have back acne and I did not know. But at the same time, I was like, great, I've been learning about skin. So I have an opportunity to self-actualize. And I love that. Right away, I knew the game plan because I'd been studying acne. So I'm going to look at this and assume that it doesn't really seem like a mystery to me. I can see that this is really appearing in a tank top kind of racer back shape and it's especially prominent around the bra line area. The big thing I learned about acne is that making it more clean, making everything more clean, does not necessarily mean you're gonna solve acne. It's not a hygiene issue, it's a condition of inflammation. And polyester seems to be driving this particular case of acne because it's really forming in the line of a bra, etc. Polyester is a fabric that's treated to behave like cotton, so it's treated to become very soft, but the reality is it's a plastic. Plastic is going to trap sweat, oil, air pollutants. Like if you're living in a city with any cars in it, there is stuff in the air that you can't even see that's going to combine and kind of like live under your clothing and stop the cell turnover process. 
So again, this is not a matter of dirt, but this is a matter of interrupting and creating inflammation based around a process that's supposed to happen naturally. This process luckily can be assisted with AHAs and glycolic acid. I'm going to use chemical exfoliation in the shower. Realistically, I know I got to take a shower every day, so why not use a cleanser that has something that will go into the skin and break the bond between old cells and new cells. And those old cells are what's causing the inflammation, causing the acne. To actually get rid of back acne, like I literally was like, okay, I cannot reach my back for sure with my hand so I had to get one of these things from Amazon this is just like a back scratcher type vibe thing uh, it's really just for washing yourself and it's really easy to just pop some cleanser on it lather it up slightly so that you know you're really distributing this and then just use this as a physical exfoliation with your chemical exfoliation cleanser and literally after a few weeks all of the redness was gone and now I'm only dealing with acne scarring which is going to take some time to heal. The thing about skincare is you have to make it practical so that you can maintain consistency. This has to be done at least three times a week and then I followed up with a glycolic acid toner. This one is not my favorite in terms of using it because I don't have like a cap for it so I just like have to pour it in my hand but it really works because this will literally kind of gently burn off the layer of darkness that is creating those acne scars. And in order to protect that, I need to put an SPF on. Even if the sun is shining over your clothing, it's still reaching the skin. If you can see through your clothes, the sun is going to darken any of those acne marks. So I had to use a spray SPF religiously. And it took some time. And in the meantime, it's not perfect, but I'm so comfortable to wear backless tops. Okay, this is so satisfying to me. If you really want to look your best, you want to stay fabulous, you have to be prepared. Like, it's not an option, especially in summertime, because plans change, it's hot, you don't feel like this or that. You have to be prepared. This is perfect. These little, like, gift with purchase cosmetic bags are going to be perfect for this little thing. I have a lightweight pack of travel-sized baby wipes. These are great for keeping you fresh. Feminine hygiene is really great on the go. And I'm also bringing a little deodorant because I might wipe off my deodorant and want to reapply in case I get really sweaty. Customize the items in this on-the-go bag. I think a powder compact in case you get oily is a great one. Try to aim your bag at the situation you'll be in. So SPF or maybe if you're going to sleep over somewhere, a toothbrush set can be really great. These are the items that essentially if you had nothing else, they would make you feel great like mascara and brows or a little hairspray and remember what you actually do in your life so that you can keep things really relative to your lifestyle. I'm gonna pack up these little samples. I never use these guys, but it's like if you bring these with you, not only are they weightless, but you never know what's gonna come in handy. And here's what's so satisfying about this. Like you will just have this bag living in your house and anytime plans change or things come up, you can literally grab it and be so thankful when you actually end up needing the items in it. I don't know why this is so great, but it just feels like I'm taking care of my future self and I love that feeling. Now a little sidetrack from beauty. I used to I used to go to school as a kid and I I didn't really get the greatest grades. I used to get really great grades if I cared, but that was really rare. If I if I cared about something, I could do well with it. But when I didn't care, I really struggled with it. And it came to a point where I like I would come home and I'm like, "Dad, listen, I literally will never need to know this in real life. Like why would I ever need to learn something if I'm never going to use it?" And he was like, "Listen, Ali, this is not about what is in front of you. What you're learning is actually going to be teaching you how to learn." learning how to learn. Like, I mean, I barely made it through high school, so I'm not talking about getting great grades, but I did learn a lot about persevering and getting through the things that seem difficult because as somebody who's always wanted to follow her own path, I've run into a ton of moments that would have seemed like closed doors, but I've been able to open those and learn things I didn't know because I hold the confidence with me that I'm, I have the skills to be able to learn new things and apply them to my life to change my life and improve my life. And with that, I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. This is an online community filled with thousands of different courses, and you're learning from people who are like self-actualizing what they're teaching, which is really exciting for me. So I've been learning from experts. I learned all about the art of giving a presentation, which was really helping me with what I'm doing right now. And then I'm also learning about self-care and a little bit of sewing because I really like, like altering my own clothes. And it's really affordable, especially compared to classes. It's less than $10 a month for an annual membership. And because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, they're going to give you two months as a free trial. Click the link below to join. Now it's time for rapid fire beauty tips. These are basically the things that I think, well, they really helped me, but they're, they don't really need a whole lot of explanation. If you have those little hairs that stick up like alfalfa, 
This is like a sign of breakage, but a couple is always normal. I'm taking a little bit of hairspray onto the hands and then pressing it down before it's dry. And this is gonna literally glue them to the head. This makes it look sleek and smooth. And I love doing this every time I wear my hair straight, it makes it look that much better. And it's a very celebrity-esque trick. That's what they all do. Okay, I feel like hats are the most underrated accessory in the summertime for women. Like a lot of people haven't seen themselves in a hat and it can be such a good look. So try different styles and see what works for you. And in the summertime, I recommend wearing these one to pull your outfit together. It makes you look more glamorous. But number two, this is gonna protect you from all of those harsh lighting elements that come when you're in the sun like peach fuzz and under eye hollows making you squint things like that it makes you look more glamorous if you have the light diffused over your face by wearing a hat to brighten up darkness in the bikini line use that same cleanser i showed you from the back acne routine you don't need to use a body brush for this but using that religiously along with an spf will help brighten the bikini area over time the one makeup problem I've always had, like since I was like 12 or 13 years old, is my mascara smudging. I have found out through research that the only way to prevent this is to switch to a wax-based formula mascara. I will link my favorite below. You literally use it as normal and it felt like it finally solved my biggest problem, which was my mascara smudging. Since it's a wax-based formula, it can't happen. It's problem kind solved. of crazy how like we're in winter and then like all of a sudden it's like summer and we're wearing stuff that's like pretty much the equivalent of a bra and underwear in front of other people and it's like a lot like to wear a swimsuit like I don't know why I just feel like with my skin like showing it just feels uncomfortable and anytime I've been in a bikini situation where I'm focusing on little imperfections about my body I've started to use accessories to draw my own eye away from my imperfections the kind of expectation is that you just wear your bikini but use little accessories like body glitter or big earrings things like cover up sexy sheer fabrics anklets, things that make you feel really happy to draw your own eye away from the things that you might be focusing on in a negative way. This is going to make you feel more confident. Anytime we can feel better about ourselves with little things like this, it's a real ahead of the game moment. Hair tips. When, okay, every time I get my period, not too much information. I just always know I'm going to get cramps. So I always take like my medication or like a little painkiller before that actually happens because I know my cycle. I've started to do the same thing with dry shampoo. Like I'll literally use it before I need it because it's like, I know my hair is going to get greasy on the third day. So that's when I start to use my dry shampoo before it's actually oily. And that way the dry shampoo is kind of sitting on the hair shaft waiting for oil to come out and it takes care of it immediately. Okay, you know how everybody's like wearing their hair in a certain curled way now? Like it's a very undone, texturized, beachy, very like I woke up like this kind of hairstyle and it's a little bit messy, something completely different from like how I used to think of curls like so perfect and tight. I bought a new curling iron, which is like a huge moment because I literally had my other one for like years and years and years. So now I expect this one's going to take me till I'm like 35. <laughs> but anyways, that's exciting. And I'm going to use this basically the exact way I would normally use a classic curling iron, but I'm leaving out the ends and I'm pulling it down a little bit so that I'm getting a, a pulled out curl. This is making the hair appear that it's not curled, it's just kind of bent in a way that's very textury and cute. And this is a perfect summer hairstyle. This goes really well day to day if you're gonna to continue to wear your hair without restyling it, it just ages so beautifully. And once you've done your whole head, it doesn't look good, ironically. You just have to make sure that after you do all of these bends in your hair, you're going to flip it over and then start shaking from the root. You have to shake the hair and really like almost scrub the root of the hair to texturize it. And now we have a decision to make. If you want to have glossy locks, go for something that's oily, that'll lubricate the hair. But if you want a sexy look, then go for some texturizing spray. I'm gonna spray this on the outer layers of the hair and move the hair a little bit, but start lifting like quarter sections of the hair and really spray underneath there so that we're not kidding ourselves and we're actually getting product all over because this is gonna create some grit and hold. If you do it right, it's gonna look fantastic. Those are my tips. Those are all of the tips and I hope that you enjoyed all of them, at least one of them. And let me know if you made it to the end of the video, you get first tips. Let me know what you wanna see in my next video and leave a comment below. I'll see you really soon. I love you, bye-bye.